Hi, my name's Jamie, and I collect physical media. So what you see behind me here is the combination of a lot of years of collecting. This is not something that was put together overnight. It's been done over many years. I've had multiple collections of movies and DVDs throughout the years. So this is what I call the second iteration of my collection. The first iteration of my collection was DVDs and an initial Blu-ray collection that had a few dozen titles in there. I think at the time I maybe had 150, maybe 200 at one time, but that's nothing compared to this collection which has maybe 3,000 Blu-rays. So when I talk about physical media, I talk about it as a love, a passion, something that I feel passionate about preserving. It is a way to the past. It's something that connects directly to the video days of going to rent stuff at Video Easy and Blockbuster. But also, I turn around and look at this and I'm like, it just makes me feel human. It makes me feel like I'm working at something. I'm working towards something. It makes me feel that I'm, I can go and live anywhere and still have access to movies and content. But there are some things that I do think physical media collectors and collectors in general often forget about and also struggle to keep up with. One of which is the space. So when you look at this collection, obviously you see this part of the collection, but what you don't actually see is behind the camera, there's a lot of other stuff in this room. I've showed it in one or two videos, but it's something that is taking up an entire bedroom. And you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of how much space this actually takes up. And yes, collecting, most collectors will say, or people who are starting their collections will say, just collect the ones you want. That's fine. And I respect that. Like that is a way to do it. But let's say you're someone who considers themselves a librarian or wants to preserve it. I consider myself that. I can consider myself someone who wants to collect to preserve it, but also because I prefer this method of watching and I prefer to have this, the look of this and everything else that goes with it. It's also very expensive. You have to keep in mind the expense of something like a physical media collection. And with physical media collections, they can be as large as you want them to be. They can be a few dozen or they can be thousands. This is like 3000 Blu-rays or something. So you have to be aware that it's, it's a reflection of yourself. It's a reflection of what you want. What do you want in your life? What do you want to show? What do you want to showcase in your collection? For me, I have a bit of everything. I have DVDs that I have never watched and don't intend on watching. There's also a part of me that is looking at, should I downsize? Like obviously the thing in physical media collectors minds constantly is that downsizing is always an option. And yes, there's parts of this collection where I'm like, do I really need Dragon Ball Z pop finals, which you don't see in many videos. But like, do I need Kid Boo? You know, do I need a pop vinyl of that? Like that's off to the side. Do I need Chocolate Margin Boo? Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you don't see in the videos constantly. But I'm also looking at like, okay, that's taking up space to have a Dragon Ball collection of pop vinyls over there. I have behind camera up on top of a wardrobe, it has some Dragon Ball figures and that takes up a lot of space, but I do like the look of that. But this is the dilemmas of collecting physical media and collecting physical items and whether it's books or CDs or whatever, you're constantly analyzing how much is enough. And there's a part of in the past year where I've really looked at my collection and said, I mean, I still collect, don't get me wrong. I'm still going out actively and picking up new, certain new releases, not all of them like I used to, but I'm picking up certain ones that I'm just passionate about having. Like, I think I bought the new Ghostbusters movie. I still have been meaning to check it out. Afterlife, yeah, I've got that one, Frozen Empire. I haven't watched Frozen Empire yet, but I mean, it's got Bill Murray and I'm gonna check it out. It's, I'm a huge fan of Bill Murray. But you know, that's the whole thing. It's like. There are things in my collection that I'm never going to watch. And there's the dilemma of, well, if I'm never going to watch it, why do I have it? Why would it be in my collection? I mean, I was going through my collection the other day and there was a movie in there that I picked up on the off chance I might actually watch it. I didn't actually look up what it was about. And then I've read the plot of it and I was like, why, do you, why is this in my collection? And there's these little things that physical media collectors will do. At points it is hoarding. I will admit it is hoarding at some points. And that's when I was putting a lot of this together. Some of the DVDs were a bit of a hoard where I was just like, I need to have them because you can go out and get the DVDs at some places like the Salvos in Australia for like a dollar and not even, you can get like three or two for a dollar sometimes. 
for me, I just look at them and I'm like, do I need to have every copy of a certain thing like Dragon Ball? I've got so many different Dragon Ball things. Like, I'm just going to go over to the side here for a second. But do I need Dragon Ball Z on Steelbook? That is one right there. That's the Steelbook. Do I need Dragon Ball Z, the 16x9 widescreen edition? Do I need that? Do I need the level sets? You know, I'm. this is what I'm trying to showcase in this video. Do I need all of these? Like, I've got the Dragon Boxes on DVD over there. I've got so many different versions of Dragon Ball that it's not even funny. It's like, at what point do you ask yourself, maybe it's time to downsize? Maybe it's time that this is kind of overkill? But then there's also a part of me that's like, no, this is a link to the past, you know? Uh, yeah, I put, this came with a little thing on it. I just keep them inside the cases when I can because I fold them down and put them inside because I really, I like to keep them if I can, but the steel book, I don't like to have stuff on if I can help it. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like with physical media, it's kind of a constant battle for physical media collectors of space versus cost versus how much, how much is enough. And that's the thing, like, I've really pulled back from physical media collecting. Like, I've talked in my cost video from previously about how much I spent up to this time on just what I've written down since 2020. And it was some insane amount. But that being said, I've really pulled back on physical media this year. I mean, I've still spent quite a bit, but it's not as much as, like, previous years. And that's because I'm making more strategic calls of, like, what do I want in my collection? What do I want to add? I'm constantly going through my collection saying, okay... Do I really need this? Do I need to have it or can I sell it? Can I donate it? Can I do something? Like I showed previously all the discs from my previous collection that I just have outside of covers and I said, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Part of me is sentimental about that. I'm like, oh, that's the original collection. I should really keep it. But then there's a part of me that's just like, well, why am I keeping it? What is the purpose of it? How often am I going to go through all those discs, the loose discs, and say, hey, I'm going to go through this and watch, blah, I don't know, Black Dahlia or something. I haven't watched Black Dahlia. I haven't been meaning to watch it for a long time. I know people say it's awful, but, I mean, it's got Scarlett in it, Scarlett Johansson. So, I mean, I'm going to check it out eventually. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think I'm going to go through that. And if I wanted to go through that, I'll just go like, oh, I'll just go and buy one at the Salvos or something for a dollar and get the case and pristine disc and all that other stuff. So, yeah, I'm really at that point where I feel like, should I downsize or should I keep going? I mean, obviously to keep going means that I would need to eventually when the time comes to move out of my apartment and move to another place. And that's a bit far off yet, but I'm analyzing that whole process. The dread of moving to another place because I'd have to close all this down, categorize it into boxes, move it to another location, set it back up. And yeah, part of me is like, yeah, that is going to be an absolute pain. But there's also a part of me that's like, is it worth it? Because it is worth it for me. It's something that I'm like, okay, I'm going to constantly draw from this. I keep looking at, I was looking at Avatar last night and I was like, is tonight the night I watched Avatar 2, James Cameron's one, The Way of Water? Is tonight the night? And I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, I kind of want to, but I kind of don't want to. I mean, I still haven't watched that movie. I didn't enjoy the first one that much. I thought it was amazing visually when the first one came out in 2009. Obviously, nothing else was around at that time. Cameron has kept on with Avatar, kept going with that world. And I don't know, I just don't really feel the need to watch Avatar 2. And I know I will check it out eventually. It's in my collection. But that was the question I asked last night. I was like, do I want to watch Avatar number two, The Way of Water? And I was like, mm, not tonight. It's, I mean, it's three and a half, whatever hours. I mean, in that time, I could probably play a bit of Minecraft. I've been loving the hell out of Minecraft, by the way. Minecraft has been excellent. I also picked up a Switch OLED the other day, and I've been playing Mario Odyssey again. Like, really, I had the original Switch when it came out, and I didn't enjoy it because I played Mario Odyssey once. Got through that, and there was not really much games on it. But now this OLED model is really like, you can feel it being like the perfect, like, the perfect console of this generation. Like, I mean, PlayStation have great hardware in terms of power. You have the Xbox who are just focusing on putting it on every platform. And then you have Nintendo, which are just kind of focusing on games. Here's the games. It's on our platform, but here's the games. Here's Mario. You know, it's like there is a certain point where I'm just like, okay, I'm actually really enjoying Switch. Like Switch is a really good platform. 
it's not necessarily going to replace my PlayStation for anything. Like, and I've talked about the Pro before, but I think PlayStation are at this weird point where they're going to start losing fans if they keep going on the path they're on. And it's not like, hey, you're not going to buy PS6. No, what I'm talking about is I might not just buy physical media games. I might not buy games anymore. I mean, Xbox have really changed the model for gaming. And as I said in the previous video, I don't know why I'd buy more and more copies of disc versions while they're not doing enough to preserve. And I picked up a couple of games the other day. So I picked up Astro Bot and I picked up WWE 2K24 because they were on sale. And those games, I mean, Astro Bot, I'll keep going back and playing. I know that's a game that will constantly stay in my collection and constantly get used. I know that's the one I'll keep playing. WWE 2K24 is more of a preservation thing. I mean, I will play it, but it's something that, hey, it's there because WWE games constantly get taken off the store after a certain period of time off the PlayStation store and all the stores. So having a physical copy of that matters to me. It means that I can go back and check out previous years. Like I still go back and check out WWE 2, uh, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 and that. It's a preservation thing. But I don't know. Are you learning anything from this video? I mean, I feel like I'm ranting at this point, but you know, these are some things that I'm constantly thinking about as a physical media collector. This is something I'm constantly analyzing. Space, cost, the dread of moving apartments eventually when that happens, where I have to constantly think of how, how do I move this from point A to point B? It's, um, I mean, there are people who do that and can, I can hire someone to do it for me, but I categorize this myself. I catalog, catalog it, put it in boxes, make sure that everything is organized so that on the other end, it's as easy as possible to take it out and put it back as it needs to be displayed. But tell me in the comments, guys, what do you think about physical media? How do you collect physical media? How do you consume it? Like, is this too much? I mean, I constantly think of this as like, this is too much, like, this collection for me is like probably a combination of many years, but it's also like, maybe I went overkill. <laughs> and yeah, that's why I'm constantly thinking, is it time to downsize? Like there's many questions about downsizing in my mind where I'm like, okay, I've got a lot of DVDs off to my left here. And I can see like, why do I have Oprah in there? Like I, I'm not gonna ever watch Oprah from 2000 and whatever. What's this Angels collection? I probably got this for, I think six bucks at the Salvos. And I was like, oh wow, I'm getting a lot of content for $6. And you know, I look at the price per entry, like, hey, I'm getting probably how many hours of content here? I probably looked at the overall six discs and I'm probably getting 1,027 minutes of content there for $6. Like I looked at that and I would have said, yeah, that is worth it. I probably would have bought this for the Tom Cruise thing. I mean, Tom Cruise, I think the jumping on the lounge segment's in here somewhere. But, you know, there's a lot of things where I was like, yeah, okay, I do want this in the collection because it's something. That being said, do I really need to have six discs of freaking Oprah? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, these are the sort of little things where I'm like, is this an addiction or is this a collection? Do I need Oprah in my collection? Do I need to have that in my collection? I don't know. But I mean, I still do watch DVDs. Like the other week I was watching Primary Colors, really decent movie, John Travolta playing a presidential candidate, Jack Stanton. And I did a little social media post on it about talking about the movie and going a bit into that. But you know, this is a pretty good movie and I don't have the Blu-ray copy of it. I only had this on physical media on DVD. So I was like, yeah, okay, I need to watch that. There's also stuff in my collection like The Gods Must Be Crazy where I can't watch that on streaming without paying for it. It's like a paid release. I think it's South Africa. It was made in South Africa. But it's like I've got that in my collection and I'm constantly like, okay, I need to keep that because I know if I throw that away, I'm not going to be able to watch it without paying on there. It's not on any streaming services as far as I'm aware. But, you know, these are the things that I'm constantly analyzing. Tell me in the comments what you guys do. Tell me... How do you prioritize your collection? How do you, how do you decide when it's too much? Tell me in the comments, guys, and I'll get back to you in the next one. Peace.